Now, with reference to the map for Kenya, I, I don't know whether the gaps we have seen are in the north, the far east. Uh, they are because the detections could not be made because the species were not there. Or they are there because no one has had the effort there. Because we are in that map, we linked environment to the gaps. And well, the conclusion that I understood was like, OK, this is also going with the environment. The lack of detections or the lack of records also goes with the environment. And I would think that probably it's, if you go to northern Uganda, certain species of plants will not exist there. And you will not have a record for that case. And I don't know whether that would also signify that there is not been a lot of work done over in the north. Well, I think that the birds that birders want to see are those specialty East African endemics. And a lot of those are kind of clustered along the, east, the western border of Kenya, OK? Um, I mean, the birders, the people who, who did a lot of that kind of populating those observational data sets, they know exactly the specialties that they want to see when they go to a place, OK? So yeah, that's certainly part of it, that, that you know, maybe you can see in you know, dry open areas, let's say east of Nairobi, all of the species that, that you could see up there in the north. Clearly, some species turn over and, and you know, move into that, that kind of Somalian woodland fauna. Um, so yeah, part of it is maybe there's just not enough to attract people to that region. Yeah. Part of it is certainly that um, you know, there's a safety factor these days over close to Somalia. Um, and part of it is simply, you know, a lot of those data are coming from non-Kenyans who are there as tourists. And you know, I saw my first secretary bird in Hell's Canyon National Park between the two courses uh, in February. And if I had more time, I might take the time to type that into a data set somewhere. Okay? So I think a lot of it is just kind of where is the groundswell of people who contribute to those efforts? And that's clearly going to be you know, Masai Mara, Serengeti, uh, Amboseli, the big national parks, Nairobi, and maybe down to the coast for some, some beach va vacation. Okay? Um, and this is also where the people are in Kenya. So even, even Kenyans, if there are birders, they're going to spend most of their time around where they live, you know, birding the city parks or birding whatever. So, I mean, that, that's just a, a, that's the way all of these data sets will look like. You know, if you, if you do this for Uganda, It'll be around. around the big cities, and in the far out areas, you'll probably get um, concentrations in the parks where there are gorillas, because the, the tourists are going there. You know, that's, that's the, one of the big attractions. Um, and parks where there are local endemics. If the birders know about it, and if it's deemed to be safe, then they'll go in there. You know, for example, in 2008, we started a program in Peru. And my group, whenever we're starting new programs, what we do is we say, OK, who's sampled where in the past? And a lot of our work is, is with molecular systematics. So that, that makes it a little bit easier. Who's sampled since 1980, when we all started collecting frozen tissues, so that you know which areas and which faunas have uh, have molecular resources for molecular systematic study? And so we know the you know five, ten, fifteen frozen tissue collections, and of those we know okay in. You know, in, in this region, in this country, we know it's Field Museum and Smithsonian that have collected there, something like that. And so we contact them and, and see where they've worked. So in Peru, we, we looked into it, and in the sectors that we were interested in, there were 
two departments, states, that had in the 80s been centers of guerrilla activity, that's G-U-E-R-I-L-L-A activity, not G-O-R-I-L-L-A activity like Uganda has. Um, and so they had been off limits when most of that early collecting, early frozen tissue collecting and specimens was done by Louisiana State University. And so we thought, okay, this is a good place to go in because nobody's been there to sample for a long, long time. And see, the birders basically saw those two departments as kind of uninteresting because there weren't any local endemics or um, species that were discovered last year or something like that. You know, the things that you really get excited about. So Adolfo was on this trip, a couple of our students, and we went into a fairly accessible area that had had a lot of guerrilla activity 10, 20 years ago, very dangerous back then. Uh, we went into this area, set two camps, and by the end of it had three species new to science that nobody had seen before at all, and another two or three species that are undescribed but had been detected or you know, people knew about them. And so that valley is going to go from a place where nobody in his right mind would go because there's nothing to see. It's going to go from that to a very exciting place where you can go and get the Gerlaria and go get the, the this and go and get that. So, you know, those biases, the, they'll vary, you know, like the, the gorilla areas in Uganda are kind of a unique feature, but you know, all of the uh, adventure tourists would love to go see the gorillas in, in Uganda. Um, so each country will have its own thing. You know, in Egypt it might be going to the pyramids and you know, you're, you're out seeing these spectacular archaeological remains, but you're a birder at heart, so you're making your lists and you're typing them into eBird. So those biases are universal. And again, it'll be really neat if you know, those of you who, are, who feel comfortable in, in GIS, let's get you and your countries this afternoon through to a view like what I showed you. And let's see what it looks like. But you'll see. It'll be the same. Another question? Just a comment. A comment. Hold on. A whole chunk of misplaced birds come from one data set. Are you? Western foundation of vertebrate soil. Ah. Added like 200 South American birds to the list of birds of Kenya. Huh. Interesting. So Adolfo ferreted out. So they are, are the localities South American? No, we don't have localities. They don't have. It just says Kenya. It just says Kenya in the country code. Interesting. So it's a stupid human mistake that <laughs> messes everything. Interesting. Thank you. I didn't take time to do that. <laughs>